you know, when Master was doing some of his lessons, he told the uh, monks who he was teaching at the time, when I'm gone, I want you to love everyone as you love me. I want you to treat everyone the way you treat me. I want you to serve everyone the way you treat me. And then he said, I don't need your service, but I'm asking you to serve so that you can practice being able to do all of this when I'm gone. And then, of course, he said that famous line to Swamiji, who asked the question. No, I always get this confused, forgive me. Swamiji asked the question, when you're gone, will we be able to feel you? And of course, that beautiful answer, to those who think me near, I will be near. But this was not when Swamiji asked the question, but it was in that lesson, he said, when I am gone, only love can take my place. I sat with that for years and years before I felt at one point that I not understood it. You cannot understand this. Love is not an intellectual concept. Love does not come through a practice of the mind. But devotion and the pure love of God, the experience of that in the center of our heart is pure love. It's an experience. It's a knowing. It has nothing to do with the mind. Having said that, all of that, getting to that place, it's like finding our way there, which we can't get there from here, is like everything else, an incredible practice. And there has to be a deep, deep desire to do that. The day that I had the inspiration to love my partner in all circumstances, in every moment, to always see God looking back at me when I looked into his eyes, to always see him as divine. Um, and I started that practice. One day it came to me, you know, you don't only have to do this with Barry. You can be this way with everybody you begin to practice. You look into people's eyes because, let's face it, as human beings, who as I've already mentioned, are all neurotic in a little bit or a lot of ways, this is not easy, we're not God. You know, we're just simply not God. Master said that to Swamiji. In, in essence, you know, several times that, and I, I forget how, I wish I could remember now, when he talked about, he was talking about the ocean. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but it was like offering somebody the ocean. And he didn't say this to Swamiji, but what you have is a cup. You know, it's, we're, we're, not, we're not master. So that's where we want to go though. So we pray for their love to flow through us. That's that chant that we sang when we were praying for the whole power, for the whole world. God's power. Pardon me? Vitality. Good. Vitality, yeah, all the words. And I don't even know if love was in there, but it's, is the word love in there? Yeah, doesn't matter. We can put it in there. We can even use that chant because we chant it all the time. God's power. And I can't remember all the words. In, Okay, vitality, good health, and strength flow through me. Yeah, and we repeat it, flow through me, flow through me. 
You could add love. God's power is love. And you could just say that, flow through me, flow through me. That's what we want as human beings. We can't love that way, but God can love that way. So it's the next time where our prayer and listening and our practice, that practice to open your heart and with your heart see God and start practicing with one or two or three people and practice either where it's easy or where you know it means a lot. It means a lot with your partner. If you're going to be with them for the rest of this incarnation, it's the hardest place to love unconditionally because we've chosen them exactly for this reason, you know, to really once again grow and expand. But boy, do our partners have access to those places in us that want to resist or react. It happens in almost every human relationship, almost. <clears throat> every once in a while I meet somebody who tells me that they've never had an argument, that it's been pure, unconditional love from day one. And most of the time, I believe them when they tell me that, but it's rare. So for most of us, our partners become uh, a very good place to practice this because there is a lot of love there. There's a lot of desire to stay with them, but it's not necessarily divine love. It's not the love of the gurus. So looking into people's eyes and seeing God looking back at us, sometimes it's easy because that person's open and it's true. Sometimes it's more difficult, but the block is always in us. You look at somebody like they're God as if they're God because they are. It's the truth. So we should be able to find it there if we're looking with an open heart. And that's a way to start that. It's a good thing to start. It's a great desire to have. And everybody, everybody in the world, I always feel, deserves that from me. It was very easy for me to get to that feeling because I was a nurse, I was a doctor, a minister. It's like everybody, everybody, you want to serve everybody, as Master said, the way that I would serve him or he here. And often I say to myself, if I'm misbehaving, I ask myself the question, would you do this if Swamiji was in the room? No. Would you do it if Master was in the room? No. For me, I say, would you do it if Jyotish and Devi were in the room? No. It's more real because they could be. So we always have to know God is always in the room. He's always in the room. And we should, as Master said, behave accordingly. So.